Welcome back to the second part of the video on Smith chart. So in this video we are going to see how to use Smith software and uh, we'll also learn how to plot the impedance. Then that technique will be extended to learn how to transform one impedance into the other impedance. So this is the Smith software. It's freely available on the internet. Click on it. Click this page. Now this is the impedance Smith chart and uh, this is the setting button we'll first see what is the expanded version of Smith chart. So here you can see that this is the expanded Smith chart. So you can see that it comprises of these horizontal circles which represent constant resistance and this orthogonal circle which are used to represent reactants like the upper orthogonal circles they are going to be used to represent different values of inductive reactants. Similarly the lower orthogonal circles they are going to use to represent capacitive reactants. But since we are not going to deal with the outside region, that is the outside, this outermost black circle, because that region is reserved for the negative resistance. So since we are not going to use the negative resistance in the discussion, so we'll use normal Smith chart. And this is that normal Smith chart. So here we are going to see how to plot the impedance. But before that, we'll see when you deal with the purely resistive components, then where do you exactly work on the Smith chart? When you deal with the pure reactive components, where do you work on the Smith chart? So let us begin. So before we proceed, it is always advised to set a reference impedance. So here, click on the setting button. Now you can see that the default reference impedance is 50 ohm and default frequency is 500 megahertz. So if you want to change any of this figure, you can change it, otherwise you can keep it as it is. So I will consider that the reference impedance will be 50 ohm. Now that reference impedance actually is the impedance given to this source here. Now based on the impedance which you are going to feed, so any impedance which you are going to feed into this Smith chart that will be assigned to this load. Now depending on the mismatch in the impedance this generator is going to respond to the added load but we are not going to deal with the behavior of the circuitry but we are going to see how to create the circuitry in this in this video this is the center of the smith chart and represents reference impedance as you can see that this dark circle it passes through the center of the smith chart therefore its resistance is always equals to the reference impedance in our case it is 50 ohm but since you're moving on this circle so you can see that you are coming across different arcs it means that the real part is fixed but there is continuous change in the reactants the resistance which is less than 50 ohm will be lying on this side that is left hand side and any resistance or the impedance which is larger than 50 ohm will be lying on the right hand side now in order to feed the impedance information you have to click on this keyboard button let us feed a resistance of 40 ohm and let the real part be zero. So you can see that the plotted point is lying on the left hand side from the center of the Smith chart. And if suppose you are feeding a resistance which is larger than 50 ohm, let us consider 60 ohm and the reactance is zero. So you can see that it lies on the right hand side from the center of the Smith chart. If you plot, suppose, the pure reactive component, let us consider that the resistance is 0 and the reactance is, suppose, plus 50. So you can see that 50 ohm reactance is lying somewhere here. Now it is on the outermost circle, which represents a resistance of 0. Now let us feed some other impedance, whose resistance is 0 and the reactance is, suppose, minus 50 ohm. So that point is lying somewhere here. So you can see that as long as you deal with the reactive component, you will be always working on the outermost circle on this Smith chart. And as long as you work with the pure resistive component, you will be always working along this horizontal line passing through the center of the Smith chart. Now we can proceed for the plotting of different values of the impedance. So for that, I will just remove all these plotted points. For that, you can use the undo button or you can use right click from the mouse. Now let us consider that you want to plot an impedance whose real part is 25 ohm and imaginary part is suppose minus j 10 ohm. So for that you bring this box cursor box on this smith chart. Now since the real part is plus 25 ohm 
and the imaginary part is minus 10 ohm so we know that the negative reactance it lies below this horizontal line so the impedance it will lie somewhere below this horizontal line only now what we have to do that we have to find out a circle which represents 25 ohm resistance so for that you can move the cursor from the left to the right side and just keep reading this part so you can see that the moment you come here somewhere here so you can see that the resistance becomes 25 ohm and the reactance is zero it means that this is that circle which represents a resistance of 25 ohm now we are interested in the arc which represents reactance of minus 10 ohm now since you are purely interested in the reactance so what you can do you can move on this circle so here you can see that as you move on this circle the resistance will remain zero but you can see that the reactance increases and the moment you cut this arc so you can see that the reactance it becomes 10 it means that we are interested in this arc so it is this circle which represents 25 ohm resistance and this arc which represents a reactance of minus 10 ohm so our impedance will appear somewhere here the intersection of this circle and this arc now let us check whether our analysis is correct or not so for that you feed the required information using this keyword tab so it is 25 ohm is the real part and imaginary part is minus 10 press ok so you can see that that point appears here so our assumption that intersection of this 25 ohm resistance and the arc of minus 10 ohm is nothing but the desired location on the smith chart similarly suppose you are interested to plot another impedance whose real part is suppose 10 ohm and imaginary part suppose plus 25 ohm so for that once again the procedure can be repeated as the earlier one you can move on this horizontal line in order to search that 10 ohm resistance so you can see that now you bring this cursor here now since the reactance involved is positive in nature so we are knowing that the impedance will be lying somewhere about this horizontal line because the reactance is positive now move this cursor and keep reading the real part so you can see that the moment you reach here so the resistance become 10 ohm and that is the required component of the impedance and on the same circle you can keep moving till you get a reactance of 25 ohm so already you can see that here 25 ohm written so you can directly jump on to onto this arc so it is the intersection of this 10 ohm resistance and this 25 ohm reactant so the impedance it should lie somewhere here at the intersection of this circle and arc so let us check it resistance of 10 ohm and the reactance of 25 ohm so you can see that now the impedance is lying here so the plotting of impedance always comprises of intersection of circle which represents the desired value of resistance and the arc which represents desired value of reactance intersection of these two will give you the correct location of the impedance on the smith chart in these two examples we have seen that the real part of the impedance was less than 50 ohm and because of which all the points they were lying on the left hand side or you can say outside this dark circle which represents a resistance of 50 ohm now we'll try to plot the impedance whose real part is larger than 50 ohm so we'll find that all such impedances will lie inside this dark circle so let us assume that you are going to plot an impedance of 100 plus j50 so for that once again the procedure can be repeated now we are knowing that this circle it represents a resistance of 50 ohm so definitely the 100 ohm resistance will be towards the right hand side so there is this circle which represents a resistance of 100 ohm and we want a reactance of plus j50 so it is this arc which represents reactance of j50 so intersection of this 100 ohm circle and the arc of 50 ohm will give us the location of impedance so that impedance will lie somewhere here so now let us plot that impedance so real part it is 100 ohm and imaginary part it is 50 ohm so you can see it is lying here now similarly we can go for other impedance now let us consider that we are going to plot one impedance whose real part is 200 and imaginary part is suppose minus 100 so for that we have to once again find out the intersection of 
a circle which represents 200 ohm resistance and arc which represents minus 100 reactants so once again we can take the help of this box so here you can see that this circle represents a resistance of 200 and since the reactance is negative so we have to refer the lower arcs and we are interested in 100 ohm reactants that is minus 100 ohm so this is the arc which represents minus 100 ohm reactants so intersection of this circle with this arc which represents minus 100 ohm reactants will give the correct location of the desired impedance on the smith chart now let us check it so the real part is 200 and imaginary part minus 100 ohm click ok so you can see that this point lies here this is that point which represents an impedance which comprises of real part of 200 ohm and imaginary part of minus 100 ohm